on, church, put your hands together. Give him a good praise. Hallelujah. He is holy. The Lord is holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, team. We welcome you to Dove Church today. Thank you for tuning in, which, whichever social media outlet you're looking at us on. We appreciate your, your constant prayers, your, your giving to those that are partnering with us to make sure that we continue to come to you. We are, we are glad for you and we bless you today and ask God to, to, to send it back to you, press down, shaking together, and running over. And so we appreciate you and everything that you do. Keep praying for us as we will keep praying for you. Receive of us today. Receive of us today. This is all designed that you would get something from the Lord today. And as usual, we're going to start with our confession. Lifting up your Bible or your phone or your pad, wherever your information is, wherever your Bible is. Repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we honor you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Stay with us. Abide with us. Help us to speak the mind of God in this time and in this season. We thank you, God, that the word of our mouth and the meditation of our heart is acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Today we start what, I, what I'll call a short new sermon series, and it's, it's called Love Like Jesus. Love Like Jesus. Love Like Jesus. Jesus. Lesson one. Love like Jesus. And beginning statement that I want to make and it will start this give me a little more volume it will start this this series out and I'm going to put myself at the forefront. The title, Love Like Jesus, I've been wrestling with for two weeks. Love Like Jesus. Wow. So it sent me on an exploration. We think we know how to love like Jesus, but wow. Because the truth is, I would rather be ill-tempered, self-centered. I'd rather be insensitive and pushy, have to have my own way. I don't want to give way to others. I want to go first sometime. <laughs> I don't want to let others go before me. I'm aggressive can be unforgiving and revenge tempted. 
I can play the victim as if it's always someone else's fault. All these things characterize not only myself, but us. Us. So when it comes to loving like Jesus, it's quite the task. Come on. The bar is high. The truth is, in spite of being a high bar set by Jesus, we can do it. You can do it. Now, remember some things that Jesus said. This, 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 this is the love bar that Jesus said. And it comes from the Sermon on the Mount in the fifth chapter of St. Matthew. And it says, and I'm just going to, you don't have to turn there. I'm going to skip through a few of the things and, and just to show you how high the bar is set. Because sometimes we want everybody else to, 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 to love like Jesus, but we want to judge like the world. We, 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 we want to judge it differently. We don't want to love. We'd rather not love, but we'd rather judge. It's everybody else's everything. Uh, Jesus said this. this. This is how you know the bar is set high. If they see you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. Could somebody say high bar. <laughs> You'll turn something, but it won't be the other cheek. Love your enemies as yourself. High bar. Because to love your enemy as yourself means you got to stop filtering them through your hate. <laughs> Woo, high bar. If someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak. What? Oh, you know the word. High bar. Bless those who curse you. <laughs> Some of us, that's our fighting piece. And don't add your mama on the end of it. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Oh, Lord. That's a very high bar. Spitefully use you. They'll be spiteful to your face. But Jesus said, love them anyhow. And this is how we know that Jesus' filter for loving is better than ours. Uh, uh, and he further challenges us from Matthew 5, 46. Get that. And, 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 and while he's challenging us, he's also hitting us because we're hypocritical in the way that we love. How are we hypocritical? He said, for if you love those who love you, what reward have you? It's easy to love people you like. That meet your need, that give to you, that help you, that do what you think they ought to do. But if they don't do any of those things, are they capable of the same level of love you're supposed to give to them? High, 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 bar. Do not, do not. And then he says, you think you're loving that way is special. He said, do not even the tax collectors do the same don't the people in the world do the same thing? They love people that love them. Whew. Hi, Bob. We have the filters that people must go through before they can receive our love. We filter. You have to meet my standard to be in my presence. We look at them to judge them. 
We call it discernment, but we're, <laughs> when we want to be spiritual. I'm discerning. Why are you the only one in your discernment circle? <laughs> you have discerned everybody away from you. Something about that ain't just ain't everything. Because you're filtering it through all your stuff. Jesus removes the filter. How did he remove it? John 13, 34. John 13, 34. And it says, I need to establish something different with you. He says, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. As I have loved you. He said, I'm establishing the bar. Love them like I'm loving you. How did he love you? Pass your ills. Pass your shortcomings. Pass your ill, pass your judgment of everybody else does not like you. Pass, all, pass your bad habit, pass your ill temper, pass your, your cussing, pass your, he loved you, pass all of that. Love like I have loved you. Somebody scream, hi, bar. <laughs> As I have loved you, that you also love one another. He repeats himself again. As I have loved you, you also love one another. As I have loved you, you also, I'm going to demonstrate how you need to love. Watch who I walk with. Watch who I talk to. Watch how I go in. Watch how I come out. You need to, a demonstration of how I love. So you love them like I love you. I can hang out with a sinner and still be the Savior. Love them like I love. <laughs> See, my stuff don't go on shaky ground because I'm with you. Because if I'm with somebody that's, that's, that's of another culture and, 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 and whatever, then, then I'm the high one in the place, but I'm really the low one. You cannot help if you can't go where the sickness is. Well, that's the introduction. I'm only going to cover two today. If you want to love like Jesus, you've got to, number one, become mindful and less detached. Become mindful. And less detached. Mindful of stuff around you. Open to see. Mindful. Less detached. Less detached is. Stop treating everyone as if they're untouchable. When you open your heart, love changes your mind. Love changes your mind. Let that sentence soak in. Your mind can do an about face when it receives a charge from your heart. Sometimes your heart convicts you to do something that goes against everything you believe in order to help somebody or either not to make a movement towards somebody because in your heart you want to see a better outcome so where you would want to judge it differently or operate differently your heart helps you to love better Your mind can be transformed when it listens to the heart. Some things you overthink. And you get creative in your thinking. How much they hate me and great was the hate of it.
You'll experience an evolution in your thinking when you allow your heart to enter the conversation. Let it come in. And for heart, I'm saying spirit. Let your spirit talk. It's what Paul was getting to when, when he said, when he gave Romans 12, 1 and 2. And I'm going to read it from the message because I like the way things were em emphasized in it. He, it and, and, and I know it says, I beseech you therefore, brother. But in the message Bible, it's not on the screen. I'm going to read it to you. Oh, well, he has it now. So here's what I want you to do. The, old, the King James and New King James says, I beseech you. But it means, here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Take your whole self and put your whole self on the altar as an offering. And in the words of my, one of my ministers, it, it, it wasn't a dead offering, it's a live offering. An offering and the sacrifice need to stay up on the altar. Are you out there? And place it before God as an offering, continuing the reading. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the right place, from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. You don't have to pray about it. Just respond. Unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develop well-formed maturity in you. If you hang with God, he'll make you, he'll grow you up. He'll mature you. Because if you hang out with the culture of this day, you will be immature. Your thinking will be immature. Your opinions will be immature. Your thought processes will be immature. While you're thinking you're all of that, you're immature. Why, why, why? You don't understand. That scripture version from the message said it all. Let's detach more mindful to the change from the inside out. The, the word mindful means attentively sensitive. You need to be sensitive. When you are mindful of your task, no one has to remind you to do it. You are mindful. They don't have to tell you when to do this and when to do that or what to get and what to bring. You are mindful of it. I don't ever wake up on a Sunday and think somebody else is going to preach unless I've called on one of my ministers, which can and will happen to some of you soon. Let them with ears <laughs> hear what the Spirit is saying. You not only look at situations, but you see them. Because sometimes people look at stuff and they don't pay attention. How many know I'm right about that? They don't pay attention. Once you see them as they are, situations, people, we are called to come closer, not run away. To come closer means a love action may be needed. 
Whenever love needs to be affected, a love action call comes out. And you need to respond. You shouldn't look and say, is there somebody else that can do that? Why is it every time somebody is in need, you find somebody else to fill the need? When you're standing there, while you're making a call, you could be finished with it. How many know I'm right about that? Let me see, can I, I find something? Then it hits you. God say, you do it. Whew. Such was the case with the woman who had the issue of blood. She got down on her knees. Crawled to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Many people were around him and touching him, but her touch moved him from not the outside in, but the inside out, because the Bible said that Jesus felt virtue leave out of him. And then the dumb, no, I can't call them dumb, disciple said, when he said, who touched me? He said, Master, what's wrong? Do you realize that all these people are around you? Everybody is pushing in on you and people are touching you everywhere. But a lot of people can touch you, but sometimes certain touches you need to be mindful of so that you can fit the need. Because when you get touched that way, God is showing me right now that something moved out of you to help in that situation. That's why it's not anybody else's assignment. And Jesus acknowledged the assignment and he said, who touched me? Because something left me. She pulled it out of me. She had a need. She didn't touch the disciples, him on their garment. She went past them and she said, I'm going to touch the one that I think is going to love me through. And she touched him. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that maybe before we pray for people, maybe before we speak in tongues over them, maybe before we pray a long, exhausted prayer, maybe before we try to throw water on them and anoint them and all that stuff, maybe they pulled what they need out of us. We just need to, we just need to acknowledge it and rally with them and say, you, you touched me, didn't you? You got something from me. And then I can put the stamp on it and say, your faith has made you. Are y'all hearing me? Not mine. But yours. What if they had blocked the way? <laughs> Are you blocking the way? But all they need to do is draw off of the fountain that's in your life. But you spooky spiritual. Salt is not good until it's out of the shaker. Oil is not good until the olive is pressed. And you're anointed to do what again? What did she pull out of him? It's virtue. And I looked up virtue. It was goodness and strength. When you love like Jesus, you are full of goodness and strength. Come on. Are y'all out there? 
You bursting at the scene with goodness and strength. It's time for somebody to do like they, they do when they want some good old maple syrup. They need to st stick a spigot into the side of the bark and tap it and let some of the sap run out. That's how you get maple syrup. Just burgeoning. You're full of goodness and strength so that somebody can tap in and receive from you. That's loving like Jesus. Again, to love like Jesus, you must become more mindful and less detached. Number two. To, be, to love like Jesus, you must become more approachable. And less exclusive. I know they may sound close, but we, we're going to bring the distinction. You must become more approachable and less exclusive. To become more like, and to, and, and to love like Jesus, I fight the urge to not be approached or bothered. You must fight the urge to not be bothered. Some things ought to put you out. Take you off your regular course. Everything shouldn't be your convenience. There should be some interruptions to your day. That you acknowledge and work in. The worst thing you can be is inflexible. To be exclusive means there is a narrow entry point that allows people to get to you. You're in, you're not. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. And we do that in church. We got Church gangs. See, I'm I'm I, 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 I'm 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 a minister and a preacher, and I know about preacher gangs. Ephesians five and two. Ephesians five and two. And here Paul says. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us a, a, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. The scripture calls your ability to be approachable and less exclusive a pleasing sacrifice made to God that is a sweet smell to him. When you are approachable and less exclusive, you are a sweet-smelling sacrifice to God. The sacrifice you make for somebody else allows you to become not a stench in his nostril, but a sweetness to his nostril. And, and, and when you look at that sweetness to the nostrils of God, it's talking about you become a, a delight to God. God is delighted with you. God is delighted that you make sacrifice to love like Jesus. Woo. Let me ask a few questions. Have you ever felt left out? Excluded? I know I have and it's painful. Excluded. Nothing reaches us so deeply into the, to our human personality as being included. We like to be included. If somebody is whispering around you, it gets on your nerve because you're not included. You think they're talking about you. And many times they are. But the, How many of you like to be included? 
Anybody ever been in school and there was always a crew? They always tried to keep you back and keep you away, and that made you feel bad. Unless you were the perpetrator. No. We long to belong. Jesus understood this deep and powerful need like nobody else. It's why he intentionally and profoundly and often shockingly was approachable by people that people said, leave that alone. Jesus was the most approachable person that ever lived. He was approachable. He was approachable. He wouldn't even rebuke children. When the children cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, the priests and the religious community got mad. How dare you stop these children from crying out? Stop them, stop them. Don't let them do that. He said, but if these hold their peace, the rocks will cry out. And he said, out of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained praise. Thou hast perfected praise. He said, he said they, they have a perfect praise life. What does that mean? They love me unbridled. There's no filters how they love me. They just love me. Hosanna. You're the man, Jesus. You're it, Jesus. I don't care that they, they, they didn't teach us how to hate. They, I don't know about what the issues are. I don't know that y'all don't want him to be the Messiah. I just know we look at him as great. Hosanna. Perfected praise. Jesus was tuned in to outcasts. People on the fringes. Those who were the most likely to feel left out or excluded. The gospels are abundantly clear. Jesus was accessible to anyone who felt undesirable or unwanted. Lepers. Gentiles. What they ran from, he ran to. Lepers especially. Stay back, you unclean. And Jesus kept walking up to them. Come on. High bar. Love like Jesus love. I'm not afraid to love you today. See, see, see. see oh, we got it so mixed up. We, we love what's comfortable. But you're not loving till you love what's uncomfortable. That's the challenge. That's the work of love. Loving when it's uncomfortable. And they don't have to come through all the oisms to be loved. You're setting some kind of bar when, when, when you knee high to a filthy rag. For by grace you have been saved. That not according to yourself. It is the Of God, and you can't even brag about it. My God. Tax collectors, the poor, the persecuted, pagan, sinners. The one that washed him up and with her hair getting ready for the resurrection was a sinful woman. But he received her because there was a spiritual thing in what she was doing. He said, he said, what she is doing, she is doing for my next move. And then the religious one said, that's costly. Oh, God. The thief is always about the money. <laughs> Somebody always saying, that's too much, preacher. But she's getting me ready for my burial. But further than that, she's getting me ready for my resurrection. So what goes in the grave will come out smelling sweet. A, a, a sacrifice with a delightful aroma to God. Up and on the move. Woo. But she shouldn't have touched him. Because she was unclean. No, we don't know where she came from before she got to Jesus. 
But when she cried and washed, because <laughs> he was approachable and not exclusive. He wasn't like the holy men in Judea. His fellow rabbis operated in exclusion. If you're not baptized right, you, uh, I, I can't be with you. If you don't do this religious practice, you're not really saved. If you're of that denomination, you know they're really not saved. Whew. Come on, you've heard some of those conversations. Let's look at, the, at Jesus dealing with rejection. His neighbors laughed at him. His family questioned his sanity. His closest friends betrayed him. And his countrymen, the Jews who he came to save, eventually tried him as a revolutionary. Somebody say rejection. Maybe that's why Jesus was so uh, 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 inclusive of those who were also rejected. The riffraff fringe who were rarely included by others. Jesus, the God-man, simply understood our longing for belonging. Jesus went out of his way to love the unloved. He didn't care what you look like. That's when you love like Jesus. If you want to love like Jesus, you can't size people up. And you say, we, we, we don't do that, Pastor. We don't do that. But we do. There are people that are asking for money on corners and stuff. We size them up. And this is the filter we carry them through. I'm not giving them so, no money because here's one. A, they just too lazy to work. B, they're going to use it for drugs. C, if they're another nationality, I don't trust them anyhow. You carry people through them filters. Instead of letting the Holy Spirit say, give to that one. Uh -huh. Give to that one. Do you understand? Loving like Jesus. Because Jesus knows the heart. God knows the heart. Well, what are your filters or standards that must be met before you can show love to somebody? What is your filter? If you want to love like Jesus, you can't be exclusive. But how? How do we do this? Why do we do it? It comes down to pride. Pride is the poison of love and humility is the antidote. Pride is the poison, but humility is the antidote. Humility shines a light into dark corners of our heart, exposing our self-centeredness and our ill will. When we humble ourselves, it speaks to who we are. Mark 10, 45 is, tells us what we came to do. Not to be served, but to serve. And then it says, let me read the whole thing. But even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. He came to do something. And then the Apostle Paul added this focus. Last scripture for this teaching. Philippians 2 and 4. Let each of you Look out, not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Love like Jesus. Love like Jesus. Love like Jesus. Love like Jesus. Blessings to you today.
Father, we thank you and we bless you for a timely word in this season. Help us to love like you. Help us to dismantle filters and operate where we need to operate in you. God, we thank you and we bless you. We bless you for everybody that heard this word that it'll find good ground and it won't be stolen away as a, as a seed. And we thank you. You love us so much. Thank you. Thank you for looking past every one of our faults and seeing our need. Thank you for loving us hard, Jesus. Thank you for loving us hard. Thank you for loving us high. Thank you for a love that has lifted us up and brought us through. Thank you. If you heard us today, I want to let you know God loves you. And we're appealing to you now to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Restore back to him. Come back. Because he loves you. He loves you. So you can repeat after me. And with this, you can enter into the kingdom. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I thank you, God, for coming into my heart, being my Lord and Savior. Today, God, I believe in a miracle. I believe one day you were born of a virgin you suffered on a cross, died and was buried. Three days later, you were raised from the grave to the glory of your Father. And on that confession and with that faith, I am saved. Thank you, God. If you made that confession, come on, put your hands together for somebody that made that confession today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are in the kingdom. We are Dove Church, at the corner of military and the ratio in Detroit, Michigan. Come see us, 4660 Military. Our phone number is 313-361-3683. Let us know. Look us up on the internet. Some information will come about this church, and you can reach us. We bless you today. Go in peace in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at dovechurch.org slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.